Anytime you're in the middle of nowhere, you're in the middle of somewhere. For these people, it's certainly somewhere. I don't know if they intentionally came here or they just wound up here, but here they are. This is Bombay Beach. We're way out on the Sonoran Desert in Imperial County, California. Although, I'm sure this doesn't look like the parts of California you're used to seeing. The only thing around are small cities just like this. If you can even call this a city. So why would these people be here? That's what we're here to talk about. And what they do and who they are. Plus, I learned Elon Musk has a huge stake in this place. I never would have thought that before. Ah, the California desert, filled with rocks, tumbleweeds, dust, and critters. It's hot and dry and windy. You can see more stars than you thought there were. You might even see weird lights in the sky. Of course, there's limits on what you can do here for fun. Clearly, entertainment's at a minimum. You're at the mercy of whatever cable and internet's out this way. So yeah, it takes a special kind of person to live in the desert like this. But there's a freedom that comes with living in a place no one else wants to live. You can do whatever it is you want out here. And that's exactly why people are out here in this squatter's paradise. I've been out to this area one time before. I came out here to camp somewhere when I was 23 or 24, but I don't remember where I was. I don't know how anybody remembers where they are at night out here. So what is Bombay Beach anyways? Well, it's not a city really, though there are aspects to city living here. When you look at a map, you can see just how far away we are from a large population center. The only thing around are some smaller towns, a lot of agriculture, and the Salton Sea. We're going to come back to downtown in a sec. Let's go out to that lake and figure out why the hell this place is even here in the first place. Here's what it looks like on the banks of the Salton Sea. Bombay Beach butts up against this lake. We're about a quarter mile from town right now. This is actually the lowest lying community in the United States. We are 233 feet below sea level. The Salton Sea is actually the largest body of water in California, but it wasn't even supposed to be here. This body of water was formed back in 1905 during an engineering mistake. They were digging an irrigation canal to run Colorado River water to crops, and they messed up, and the water spilled into this basin for two years straight. So I guess you could say this is an accidental man-made lake. The water has a very high concentration of salt because of all the minerals that were picked up by the water flowing in. Here is truly a miracle in the desert. A whole new outlet for the crowded millions in big cities. A Palm Springs with water. Here is where you can find the good life in the sun. Today, the Salton Riviera, beside the blue Salton Sea, is the place for you to take charge of your future. You can come as you are, no reservations required. Enjoy life at the Riviera. The Salton Sea was a really popular place for people to come and hang out up until about the 1980s. People like Frank Sinatra and the Beach Boys came out here to luxury resorts where they sailed and they fished and they drove their fancy boats. Back in the day, they called it Palm Springs with water. However, times have changed. The whole resort town thing dwindled away. That's because the lake's been drying up. It's very controversial. A lot of this water is now being used to irrigate the huge farms of lettuce and carrots, watermelons, onions, and cantaloupes in the area. Plus, it's really just a big puddle, and puddles in the desert eventually dry up, right? You can really see how much this lake has shrunk over the years. There's salty mud puddles everywhere, and dead fish. It's just smelly and kind of gross. 
Supposedly the water is toxic, but locals swear it's swimmable. Anyways, when all the water started drying up, all the little towns along this lake became ghost towns, including Bombay Beach. Well, it's not a ghost town. I guess you could call it a living ghost town, though. And this ghost town is slowly being brought back to life again. Twenty years ago, the population here was 336. It had been whittled down to a couple hundred people, but things are changing now. Over time, people have slowly started to trickle back into Bombay Beach. They're drawn by the desire to get away from society and live an alternative lifestyle. Artists, intellectuals, bohemians, hipsters, retirees, weirdos. Good people, most of them. Plus, it's just way cheaper out here. In California, cheap living is hard to find. Most people here are older. I think the average age is something like 58 years old. You might not think this place looks very desirable. Much of what you'll see looks very post-apocalyptic. Broken furniture, rubble, graffiti. All around are discarded homes, abandoned trailers, shanties, shacks, temporary shelters, and oddly, art installations. It's actually the artists that really put this place back on the map. The town was kind of dying off, but then all these funky people came out here and rebuilt a lot of this place. And suddenly, Bombay Beach became world famous again. People came out here to visit. A lot of them felt the unique energy here and decided they wanted to stay. They come from all over, LA, San Diego, even from overseas. There's a lot of freedom here that you don't find in many of the big cities. I mean, you can have campfires in your front yard and you can drive your off-road vehicles around town. Clearly, there isn't traffic and there aren't any shootings and there aren't any homeless tents and poop on the ground. If I told you you could move here and buy a home, would you? Probably not. But guess what? That doesn't matter anyways, because homes here are hard to come by. Not homes like this. There's a bunch of abandoned buildings in town. But if you wanted to buy a house that you could move into right away, good luck with that. They're a premium these days. This one's listed for $129,000. It's very rare. Places like this are snagged up right away when they hit the market. Everybody just wants to be out here now. What is this place? Is this art? This certainly isn't a place for families, nor is it a place for somebody trying to advance their career. Those who are easily bored might be in for a reality check. There used to be five bars here. Now there's two, the American Legion and the Ski Inn. I like the Ski Inn. It's a funky, kind of laid back, very welcoming restaurant slash bar right in the heart of town. This is actually where people get their mail in those boxes right there. It's a famous place, the Ski Inn is. A lot of famous people have come here and bellied up to this bar and they tried the food and drank cheap beer with the locals. In a small town, this is the kind of place where folks come in and gossip and complain and otherwise share their views of the world. Neat place. There's also a little church in town and they have a mini grocery store. I'm going to assume whatever you get there is going to be somewhat overpriced since the next closest place to get foodstuffs is 10 minutes away in Nyland. Who wants to drive to Nyland when you have all this, right? Or I guess you could just hunt and fish for your daily spread. The lake has corvina, tilapia, and croaker. Good eating if your expectations for fish varieties are a little toned down. Now it depends on who you talk to if you want an opinion on Bombay Beach. The internet's full of reports that the air's toxic, that it's filled with pesticides, dust, and ironically, toxic vapor escaping from the Salton Sea. But the people who live here say the air quality's wonderful, and the water's the cleanest water in the state. I didn't test either of them.
Bombay Beach isn't an actual city, it's a census designated place. That means that the cops and the fire department are provided by Imperial County. Just about once a day, the sheriff will drive through town. Though I hear it's a very peaceful place. It's not violent at all here. Just a few thieves around town. A lot of the disputes here are handled internally. Kind of a neighborhood watch kind of a thing. I'd guess in a place like this, if you're an a-hole, you'd have a tough time making friends, right? There's no actual city council, but there's sort of one. The town's managed by a five-member district that meets once a month, but they're all volunteers. For work, some people commute 45 minutes to Indio or to a nearby fish farm. There's a prison nearby, and there's a mineral hot springs resort not too far away. Some folks here do odd jobs, some work from home. Yes, there's internet here, but it's not very fast, but they're working on a plan for that too. It's estimated that about one in three people here officially live in poverty, but you don't need a lot of money to get by. A lot of these people are retired, so the average income of 11000 a year is pretty misleading. So people here aren't broke, but they're certainly not rich either. But that might change. Beneath these waters is a treasure trove of lithium. And if you know anything about electric vehicles, lithium is a very important commodity. Over the last five years, there's been a huge amount of renewed interest in this part of California. Elon Musk and Warren Buffett have invested a lot of money into extracting the lithium from the seabed here. Lithium is selling for 70000 a ton, and they think there's $6 billion worth of lithium here. Some estimates say this is one of the 10 biggest lithium deposits in the world, people. So you can see why rich people want to secure rights so they can get it all out from beneath this lake. Today, you'll see engineering crews all over the area. Warren Buffett even bought up some of the railroads in and out of town so he could truck the lithium in and out. Who would have thought that Warren Buffett and Elon Musk would be prospecting on shores that look this gnarly, right? Of course, I talked about how the Salton Sea is losing water every year, but Elon Musk has a plan to help with that. He doesn't want to see the water leave because he wants the lithium. Rumor is he has a plan to use his boring equipment to make a 75 mile channel from Carlsbad all the way up to this sea to fill it back up again. He's also planning to build a big battery factory somewhere near here, way out in the middle of the desert. Here's a picture of the potential lithium plant that might be built here one day. Because of all of this, people are now calling this place Lithium Valley. It's also been called the Saudi Arabia of lithium. The only question is how much environmental damage is going to happen if this experimental lithium mining process actually happens. I mean, the air is already toxic here. Did you know Mexico might help save the salt and sea? When did Mexico ever send us anything but refugees, Mappy? Mexico might build a canal from the Sea of Cortez to help fill this lake up. Huh. Well, that'd be nice. Sorry, Mexico. Didn't mean to make you mad. Please send us your water. In exchange, we'll send you Mappy. He has a very large family. He'd fit right in. When I was in Iowa, I visited tiny towns like this. Places with a couple hundred people that were separated from everybody else by an hour of nothing. But those places felt insulated. Maybe it was being surrounded by all the corn that made these Midwestern towns seem less exposed. The vibe here is nothing like that. There's nothing insulating here. But it's peaceful and it's quiet. And for some reason, there's way more energy out in this desert than any other small town I've ever been. Who knows? It looks like we're going to depend on lithium a lot in the near future. This might be the next boom town. And that is hard to imagine.